What is going on, everyone? The Phillies win this baseball game 4-1. to one. By the way, this will be my last day outside of the studio. I'm helping out my grandmother and watching her dog while she's on vacation. Does that stop me? No, it doesn't stop me. And the Phillies right now, they win themselves a baseball game tonight. They took the first two games from the Braves in this series. They now win the season series against Atlanta. Oh, and by the way, this baseball team is 47 and 44 against teams that are over 500. It's, it's ridiculous. This baseball team is ridiculous. They find a way to continue to stay relevant. Who would have known? I mean, who would have known that this was going to happen? Oh, I can tell you. Probably everyone because that's how it's been all season long. They just won't lose. <laughs> it's like we're mad that they just won't fall out of this race. But here they go. They win a baseball game 4-1, to one, and it started out so hideous. Zach Eflin was on the mound. He had a fantastic day, but defensively it was hideous. You have Cesar Hernandez forgetting how to play baseball. I mean, two sloppy errors. He gets the ball. He's throwing it into the dugout. He's throwing it into the stands. Like, he has no clue what he's actually doing. Adam Hazley can't catch a ball out there in center field. It got so ugly, and the Braves had a 1-0 lead. Only 1-0 after that. I don't know how. From there... Zach Eflin dominates. He went seven strong innings. Zero earned run because the one run they scored was obviously due to errors. 99 pitches in those seven innings. Vince Velasquez has 99 pitches after two. But his effectiveness with the fastball and how effective he was with that sinker. Ew, that was a gross performance out of him. 99 pitches, like I said, 66 fastballs, and that sinker was special. You want to hear it again? I'll tell you again. Isn't it crazy how dominant he has been since he stopped listening to the pitching coaches? It's something to think about. It's definitely something to think about. But Zach Eflin was smooth today. He was a difference maker. He was confident out there on the bump. He's been pitching the way that he started the season. And if we're going to continue to make this magical run and stay in this, we're going to need all of our pitchers to really do that. So when we were down one nothing, Bryce Harper steps up and hits a bomb. A bomb! Does it again. We take the lead 2-1. to one. In the 6th. We do more damage. Cesar. A bomb. Solo shot. Up 3-1. And then with zero out, still the same inning. Base is juiced. Now, we only score one run when the bases were juiced. It was a walk. We walked, <laughs> we walked and that scored a run. It gave us a 4-1 to one lead. I was a little disappointed because I wanted to do more damage there. I wanted to shove more runs down their throats and put the game away. Of course, we couldn't do that at the time. But it didn't come back to bite us. Because we were able to hold on. Thanks to Alvarez, who has been fantastic for us. And thanks to Hector Neris, who stepped in and had a completely different outing than what he had the day before. The day before, it got sloppy. There was a man on third base with one out. He got out of it, but it was sloppy. It was ugly. Today, it was pure dominance out of Hector Neris. I mean, he went up there. Bang, bang, bang. Smell you later. Let's walk out of that ballpark with another W. He shut the door. Now, I, I overlooked this, by the way, with Bryce Harper's dinger against Tehran. Uh, he, he just he destroys this guy. No matter what he does, no matter what selection he goes with in terms of what pitch he's going to throw, Bryce Harper does damage. Bryce Harper just has the guy num just has his number. I mean, that's how it works sometimes in sports. Some guys you just thrive off of. Well, Bryce Harper literally destroys this fella, and I'm here for it, and I'm here to watch it. I knew I should have bet Bryce Harper was going to hit a ding-dong today on my DraftKings Sportsbook, but I didn't do it. I didn't have the balls to do it. Now, Aaron Nola's on the mound tomorrow against Soroka. Speaking of not having balls, I haven't bet—I'm sorry, I have bet Aaron Nola 
in his last five starts. Well, guess what? We haven't gotten the W. And I'm not saying it's his fault, but the last five starts, we haven't won with Aaron Nola on the bump. I've bet them all. And I've tweeted, after the last time we lost, I will not, I repeat, I will not bet his next start. Do I do it? Do I do it? No, I don't think I'm going to, because here's why. This team struggles with getting seven games over 500. Right now, we are 78 and 72. There's no way, right? I mean, there's no way. Also, factor in, are the Braves really going to get swept at home? They're due for a win, right? I got to stay away. I got to stay away. Broads, stay away. Okay, I will. Good thing I listen to myself. Gene Segura had two hits today. The bottom of the lineup struggled, though. Uh, you had Scott Kingery 0 for 4, Adam Hazley 0 for 4, Franco 0 for 4. The bottom of the lineup struggled. We scored with power. We've been doing that lately, though. We've been actually scoring with power. We've been scoring with the long ball as of late. So it wasn't like we had this obnoxious amount of hits, but we found a way to really go out there, hit the baseball far, and score runs that way. Which, hey, listen, I'll take that any single day of the week. Any day of the week, I'll take that. Are you kidding me? As for what Zach Eflin and his pitching staff did, they really held the Braves' weapons to not much noise, really. Freddie Freeman, hitless. A couple guys at the top of the lineup had some hits, but as a whole, the pitching staff did a really great job for the Phillies today. Now, Matt Klintak spoke to the media today, and you know I, I heard some things that pisses me off, but it is what it is, and I'm not surprised. I'm just disgusted. You know, he kept getting asked about Gabe Kapler and how do you feel about Gabe Kapler so far, and he said, truly, I truly mean this. We are not going to assess anything right now until the season's over, talking about how he'll look into that kind of stuff in the offseason, which I'm sure that is true, right? Like, I'm sure that is when he's going to address the situation, but it was almost as if he pretty much was going with, yeah, Gabe will be back. And I'm just pissed off with that because, you know what, as much as the roster is flawed, okay, and it is, and you can look at Matt Klintak and say that's his fault, and you can look at John Middleton and say you gave these guys longer-term deals before it was probably necessary, I, and when I say that, I'm talking about McPhail and Matt Klintak, or yes, McPhail and Matt Klintak I'm, I'm talking about. John Middleton gave them extensions, but this is the thing. You can have a flawed roster, and you can be a bad manager at the same time. To me, Gabe Kapler doesn't know what the hell he's doing, but whatever. This isn't a this isn't a time to freak out about Matt Klintak and and Gabe Kapler. This is a time to say, "Wow, this team is not falling apart. Wow, this team is continuing to stay in it. It's unbelievable." You know, if we're 150 games into the season, think about that. 150 games into the season. I said this before when we were about 100 games in. I remember when I first started doing it this season, and you type in the title, and at the end, game one. And then you find yourself game 12, game 20. I will be typing in game 150 at the end of this title. It's crazy, but we are 150 games in. It is. I guess you would say towards late September. It's not really the middle. We're pushing towards later September at this point. It's almost September 20th. What is today's date? Is it the 18th? The 19th? I think it's the 18th. Whatever. What I'm saying is it's the, the second half of September, and we still have meaningful baseball. Is it that meaningful? No, it's not insanely meaningful. We know it's a far stretch to get in. Yesterday it was like a 0.4% chance to get in. But what I'm saying is this team has baseball to Give us. Like, it's watchable. It's watchable. I'm, I'm sitting there and watching every pitch still. I haven't had a Philly season that can give me that in, uh, I don't know, 3,000 years. So take it for what it is. You know, I'm sitting my, my ass down on that couch, and I'm watching the game. It's late September. The game means something. So, there you go. There you have it. I want to know your thoughts, by the way, on Zach Eflin. I want to know your thoughts on Bryce Harper and how dominant he is. Another ding dong. Thing was a moonshot. The launch angle was unreal. I mean, a whoa. Bomb. Just a bomb. And Cesar follows it up. Like, who are you, Cesar, after those terrible defensive plays? Who are you to hit a dinger? <laughs> it was uh, it was something else. So tomorrow, Nola, Soroka, great matchup. Fantastic matchup. 
Will we be able to go into Atlanta and sweep them? Will we actually be able to do that? While they do those stupid chants. Shut up! Let me know your thoughts. See you guys next time.